Scribus team have recently released uh, Scribus 1.4 Release Candidate 2, so we're nearly there with the final release of 1.4. In this video I'm going to look at the new features found in this version compared to the last stable release, Scribus 1.33. Okay, when we open Scribus up it looks uh, very similar in many ways. I'm just going to close down my rulers because I think they make everything look a little bit confusing. Okay, uh, the tools across the top are much the same, although they have changed the icons, they've jazzed things up a little bit. Um, a few changes there. There's this, this new button that's appeared, Insert Render Frame. And what that does is it's for inserting formulas. It actually uh, gives you instructions to right-click and choose Edit Source. And you get this rather complicated editor that's used for formulas. I'm working on Linux and I needed to install Latex uh, before this would work and you can easily Google how to install Latex if you have that problem. Okay, I'm just going to cancel this. I have no intention of inserting formulas. Okay, um, another major change is on the right hand side here we have a, a range of PDF buttons. They've, they've much increased the um, ability to produce PDF forms for online completion. Uh, I'm not really going to go into that today, but suffice to say those tools have been improved. They've also added some extra shapes. We've got jigsaw shapes and a, and a few extra shapes in here. <coughs> From what I've read about uh, this new release, a huge amount of the changes are actually under the hood. They're things you're not going to see, but it, it is uh, in improving the Scribus experience. Changes that do matter very much to me are certainly to do with how text is entered. Um, I created a text box here, put a little bit of text in it and if I wanted to edit that I would traditionally use the story editor which now just says edit text. When I open the window it's still called story editor but it's very different. Previously there was a huge range of options across the top now they're reduced to pop out menus. Personally I don't like it, I would prefer to have them all there. Uh, this is a bit of a pain to me when I want to update frame, I've got to click this out, click update frame. Um, okay. However, um, with some of the other changes to Scribus, particularly the uh, way to change text through the properties dialog box on the on the right here, will probably mean you'll be using Story Editor less anyway. So I'll close that for now. Okay. Um, I've got a bit of text here. I could double click into the box, highlight the text and let's do something with it. The properties dialog box on the right, if I click onto the text tab, you'll see this has changed a lot. Initially you only see some fairly basic options here. For instance I could go onto the text size and increase it like this, or better still move over and use the mouse wheel. And as I increase the text you can see the problem. The line spacing doesn't change. Traditionally then we would have gone and changed the line spacing manually. And that's fine, you know, because this isn't a word processor, you do want complete control. But, here's a great feature for casual users at least, automatic line spacing. Okay, That in itself, I think, is a reason to upgrade to uh, Scribus 1.4, automatic line, sp line spacing. You've also got access to a huge amount of properties here, colours and effects, style settings, um, in these pop-out dialogues. Um, you can change everything pretty much from here. So I think that's a great improvement on, on how we can edit text through the properties dialog here. Okay, leave the text alone, have a look at uh, an image for a moment. Here we have uh, an image. And when we're on the, the image tab of the properties box, you'll see there's this extra button, image, image effects. These effects were there before, but they weren't so obvious. They weren't within the tab here. So here I can just click the image effects, I can choose some effects to add, maybe posterize, add it. I'm going to reduce the colors, which gives you the poster-like effect. Maybe blur it a little bit. I don't know why I would, but maybe I want to. And then apply it and just wait a little moment and that will be applied. Um, there you go. So that's quite good to have the image effects so handy. You know with the extra shapes, we can also go in the shape box. Uh, while we have the image selected, pick one of these fancy new jigsaw shapes. You know, some quite nice little effects. We could go in and edit that. Um, drag things around. Okay, 
um, you know, nice easy way to get some rather nice effects. Okay, so there's, there's that too, and the 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 all of these properties tabs, the dialogues have changed a little bit in their appearance, and I and I think much clearer for the changes. Be great for new users. Um, Okay, styles are something that are very important in Scribus. Pre previously, uh, you'd be on some text, go to the story editor. If I wanted to change style, I could do it from this little drop down menu here. Oh, which I can't. Or edit, there was edit styles, go to the style menu. That's gone too. It seems now to get to edit your styles, you've got to go edit styles or F3, the shortcut. To get to your edits, to, to the style manager to edit styles or create new styles. Um, I think this is good um, because it, they've actually tabbed it. So when we create a new style, you can create the style for the character uh, and and the, and the whole paragraph, which I think is great. The way they've separated properties from the character there. Okay, so I think the style manager itself is much clearer, much less confusing. So that's good. Um, what else have they done? Oh, a pretty significant change for those uh, people who are going for uh, printing, uh, you know, perhaps to external printers. The color support is much improved. We now we can do in a vari variety of different color modes, and they've also included support for standard British, standard American uh, color schemes. So that's a really big change in terms of producing output for commercial printing. Um, they've also improved the help menu, go to help, scribers manual, straight into the online version of the manual. It's far from perfect, but it's actually not too bad. Um, I don't know, what could I look at? Setting up scribers, scribers basics. This bit's quite good actually, the scribers basics. That's worth a read if you're new to scribers. Um, so the help's better, but it's not fantastic. Um, better is that you get yourself a book. I've got a couple of books. I have the PDFs and the books of these. There's this Scribus manual. Uh, it's based on 1.3.3, but it really doesn't matter. It covers so much about Scribus. Uh, if you had this book, you would be able to use Scribus 1.4 very quickly if you put some work into it. And there is also this Scribus 1.3.5, so it, it's aimed at a slightly more recent version. But it is a beginner's guide. It really doesn't go into great depth. It is aimed very much at beginners. And the guy's English isn't actually fantastic either. Um, thoroughly recommend you buy the books. You can get the PDFs, of course. You can download them. Um, but it's nice, I think, with open source software to support the authors and buy their books. And to be honest, I find it easier to use and write notes in too. OK, I think that's all the changes I'm going to cover in this quick video. Scribus 1.4 definitely is worth an upgrade. I will be using it for all future video tutorials. Thank you for your listening. Thank you for your time.